Please welcome to the stage Miranda Kerr, founder of Cora Organics, and Jenny B. Fine, executive editor of Beauty for Women's Wear Daily. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jenny B. Fine, the executive editor of Beauty at WWD and Beauty Inc., where we cover all things related to the business of beauty across multiple platforms. And of course, I'm here with Miranda Kerr, who needs no introduction. We all know Miranda as a supermodel, but maybe not as many of us know her as a beauty pioneer. Um, she was one of the first celebrities to launch a beauty brand back in 2009, and she's also a pioneer in the naturals arena, where she was really one of the first people to combine the idea of natural ingredients and efficacy. So today she's going to give us an insider's perspective on how she's built Cora Organics with purpose, intention, and integrity. Um, I have the pleasure of asking most of the questions, but we want this to be an interactive session. So please, you can, um, you can ask questions through the app. And if you go to the app and you press engage in the engage section, you can enter your questions for Miranda and we will get to those. So that was a long introduction. Miranda, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, it's great. it's great to be here and thank you so much for being here. And and hi to everyone. I want to start by by asking you about how you first came to beauty products. Of course, we know you on the cover of every magazine, but what was your entrepreneurial journey like? What launched it? Yeah, so I actually grew up in a little country town in Australia, and at the time, we thought that we were quite health conscious. We, my grandparents had an organic vegetable patch, and I would cook with my grandma and, you know, we really, from a young age, I felt like health was wealth. And then when I was a teenager, my mum was diagnosed with cancer in her spleen. And so at that point, we really had to have a look at all of the products that we were using, not just what we were eating, but also the products that we were using in our household. And what was interesting to us is that you know, we were very surprised to see that there were potentially harmful ingredients in the products that we were using, you know, in our home, whether it be cleaning products, packaged goods, shampoo, and of course, skincare. And my mum was given, when she was sick, she was given this book called Chemical Maze, and it explained in layman's terms, really um, all about the ingredients and what... It might be, whether it be a humectant, a solvent, a foaming agent, and if that could be potentially harmful to you in large doses. So that's kind of where it sparked my interest. And from there, you know, I was, because I was a teenager at the time, so we were continually looking for cleaner products for our home, and we were on the search. And then it wasn't until 2006, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine explaining we had cleaned up a lot of, the, you know, our household products, but I wasn't able to find something for my skin. And we learned that obviously our skin is our largest organ. What we put on our skin soaks directly in. So it's really important to be conscious of that. And so she was saying, and I was like, I haven't found like a certified organic product. And she said, well, why don't you speak to a friend of mine? And this friend um, actually was a certified organic aromatherapist and she put me in touch with a lab. We had a conversation. I was talking with these chemists about products. And next thing you know, we were doing formulations and I invested my own money from day one. Um, and from, from the beginning, did you have a vision of a fully formed brand or were you really looking to create some products for yourself, for your mm. family, for your loved ones? In the beginning, I wasn't doing it for any other reason but to create products for myself and my family. And what was incredible is when we started the testing process of these products, we were getting incredible results. Um, my mum actually also had rosacea around this area and she was on a steroid cream and it was really impacting her confidence and she felt bad, you know, having to apply that to her skin every day. 
And so I gave her our Noni Glow face oil and she got incredible results. Within a week, she was off that steroid cream and she was like, we need to kind of make this available to everyone. And now we're in over 30 countries in physical stores and we ship to over 160 countries. But it started with that genuine passion for finding something that I wanted to put on my skin and my family's skin because we knew that we were just horrified to see that there were products out there that were allowed to be on the shelf that we assumed that were safe, that potentially were causing harm. And at what point were you like, wow, I have... I've, I have a significant business here. I still feel like I have a, a very small business compared to the other businesses that are out there. Um, obviously, as I said, we're sold, you know, we sell to over 160 countries. We're, in, we're sold in physical stores in 30 countries, but I still feel like we're a baby and I still feel like we're growing and evolving and and I have a really incredible team and I'm so grateful for my team because that's something you learn when you have a business. You have a passion about it and you want to be involved in every single, in every single aspect of it. But you have to be able to trust your team and empower your team to follow their passion and, you know, not... Um, I had to learn to not micromanage. But when it's your baby, you're like, oh, it's like when you have your first child, because I have three boys. So when I had my first child, I was like, oh, um, even to my mom, make sure you change the diaper this way, you know? It's <laughs> like when you have your business, you're like, oh, make sure you do it this way. And then you'd like eventually when you have your second and third child, you're like, okay, relax a little bit more. <laughs> so talk to me about ingredients. What are the ingredients that have been the through line and Cora from the very beginning? And how are you seeing this ingredient landscape evolve as well? Ingredients to me are really... Uh, the most important thing for every beauty company, I believe. And what I believe in, and I'm all about health being wealth, I believe in beauty internally and externally. So a lot of our ingredients are ingredients that I have been having internally and applying externally on my skin for many, many years. So for instance, Noni is one of our um, key ingredients and everyone's like, what's noni? Well, noni is a superfood superfruit that contains over 100 vitamins and minerals. It's rich in vitamins A, C and E. And my grandmother introduced me to it when I was a teenager and I would take like a little 30 mil shot and there's done, been a lot of scientific research on noni and how it actually... Um, if you look under a microscope at your cells, it normalizes the cells. So sometimes there might be abnormal cells, so it normalizes the cells. And so it's really about putting those nutrients back into your skin and uh, boosting the immunity of your skin, like it's also boosting inside. Also turmeric is one of our incredible ingredients. It's an anti-inflammatory ingredient. I cook with it every day, but I also use it on my skin every day because we have a multitude of products that contain turmeric for its anti-inflammatory, it's calming for the skin, it's also brightening for your skin. Um, mushrooms, silver ear mushrooms are another ingredient that we use. It's like a natural hyaluronic um, acid, so it binds moisture to your skin and really plumps the skin and gives it that glow that we're all after. Uh, but the, I mean, I could talk for oh, one other <laughs> ingredient that I'm, I, I'll, you guys will be like, oh, it's 8 p.m. We're still talking about ingredients. <laughs> um, kakadu plum is one of the other ingredients that I'm very excited about. It originates from Australia and it's the highest um, natural form of vitamin C. And so we created a vitamin C serum, which is 12% vitamin C. It's the first certified organic serum in the world, vitamin, vitamin C serum in the world. And it's so potent and it really helps with pigmentation. And every time I was pregnant, um, I would use it and it would help combat that pigmentation that I would get naturally from pregnancy. So it really kept that at bay and transformed my skin. And just to mention another ingredient. Um, you know we're all taking <laughs> notes here. People are writing very quickly. Um, I'm sure a lot of people may have heard of Bakuchi oil. It's like quite a big ingredient that people are talking about as a natural alternative to retinol. So we created a product actually that launches on March 30th um, and it's the product in that photo. Um, yes, can we bring up this slide? Oh, not, I think, oh, sorry. 
sorry, this photo. <laughs> but that, oh, well, that we'll is. So we can, we can talk about it, actually, since we're here. So this actual um, plant stem cell retinol alternative serum, it contains Bakuchi oil, which really helps with fine lines and wrinkles. So there are other products out there that are natural that have Bakuchi oil. The reason this one is different is because not only does it have Bakuchi oil, but it also has alfalfa. And the alfalfa is a very new ingredient that people are using um, to smooth the fine lines and to strengthen the skin and to really help with the, um, you know, with the anti-aging, I guess you could say. And in addition to that, it has acai, another ingredient, noni um, and, yeah. And I think for me, what's so interesting about this, you know, historically in beauty, when we've talked about natural products, people have often felt like there's almost a trade-off that they have to make between products with natural ingredients versus products that have an impact on the skin, products that work. And increasingly, and I think we see it here, those two factors are really converging yes. that is possible now. So from day one, I really wanted to make sure that I wasn't just creating products that were healthy for you. I wanted them to be cutting edge, scientifically backed, clinically proven. And, you know, that's why we do all these studies. And as you can see from these studies, these studies were done over a four week period. It's interesting because a lot of studies on retinol are done over a six week period. And these studies were done on women who um, actually were traditional retinol users. So they were using chemical retinol treatments. And the reason we chose to do that is because we wanted to compare and see if they preferred our stem cell retinol alternative serum or the chemical one. And almost 80% of them, as you can see, said that our product was more effective than the traditional chemical retinol product that they were using before. So that's really quite powerful and the results speak for themselves. Not only does it help with the fine lines, it also helps with the firmness around the neck, as you can see there. It helps with this area um, here, which I'm always worried about, but it's okay. <laughs> um, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> but it's it's, it's it's really interesting to know that you don't have to compromise your health health to really get the results that you need and obviously aging is inevitable but I don't know about you but I want to be a grandma with great skin and I think that one of the things that is so interesting about you is that you studied integrative health and wellness mm -hmm like during and after your modeling career. Yep. Tell us about that and how it's impacted how you formulate. So I studied at a course based out of New York, Integrative Nutrition, so I'm a certified health coach. And what I loved about that course um, was really that it looks at the 360 degree of health. It's not just about what we put in our body, it's our thoughts, it's who we surround ourselves with. It is really a 360 approach to health and wellness. And I think that that is a way that I approach it. And it made so much sense to me that if you wanna be healthy, it's not just one thing that you have to do. There are so many other things. And it's about like, what exercise do you do that makes you feel help, uh, makes you feel good? And it's one thing doesn't fit all. Like it's really up to you as the individual to find what is it that makes your heart sing? What is it that makes you feel happy? Like, honestly, I never thought I would say this, but now that I'm approaching 40, I've really gotten into running. And like my whole life, I felt like a turtle and thought I could never run. And <laughs> now, next thing you know, I'm running. And it's like, it, it, I get the endorphin release. It took a little while to get into it. But now I love it. It's, it's more of a walk, run, walk, run, but <laughs> it works. Um, and as I was saying, like, it's important for you as an individual to find things that work for you. So exercise is one, of it, one part of it, you know. Of course, like that balance, right? Because, yeah. I mean, no matter if you're not eating well or exercising, no matter what you put on your face. Well... <laughs> we didn't really do studies in that depth of like, can you imagine if we did? <laughs> and also like, I really want to do studies on like, what if they use the whole skincare regime, like all the steps that, you know, I use, then, then we should take the before and after results because that would be pretty cool. Okay. So tell us but about love, your like, skin. We have 
so many of these studies that show the efficacy of these products because there is such a misconception that organic is maybe not as powerful as traditional you know, products that are out there on the market. But um, I want to talk about those misperceptions yes. in a moment. But yes. first, I want to know what your skincare routine is. Yes. And where do you fall on the low, medium to high maintenance scale? Well, I, being a busy mother, a busy working mother, um, so I have three boys. I have a three-year-old, a four-year-old, and a 12-year-old. And this morning when I left, they were all like, Mommy, don't go, because <laughs> I flew in this morning. Um, hence, I'm a little bit sleepy, but that's okay. I'm always up at 5 a.m. more peppermint oil. Yeah, the peppermint. I put peppermint essential oils on my uh, hands to just kind of invigorate the senses. Um, so my skincare routine, I have a morning and evening skin routine, and basically it's cleanse, mist, moisturize, serum. And so, and then I add our turmeric scrub, which my husband also uses in the shower, actually, every morning. And he loves it so much that even when one time we were on a trip and I was going to London and he was going back to LA and I had forgot my turmeric moisturizer and my turmeric scrub. So I was using his and I was going to take his to London. He's like, you are not taking my turmeric scrub. <laughs> I was like, you're going back to it's LA. It's a family glow. Yeah. I was like, you're going back. He's like, you're going to London to launch your product so you can get some more there. And I was like, Oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad you love it that much that you can't part with your turmeric scrub. So anyway, the turmeric scrub is an important part of the skincare routine. So it's, and they're all, I use all Cora products. So, okay, so in that's the morning, morning. So yeah, if okay. you want to know the intimate details, like <laughs> intricate details, I can go into it. And then what do you do in the nighttime? Well, and then I forgot the eye cream. So I use also the eye cream and the eye oil. Okay. Um, so that's the morning. And then I normally gua sha. So we have a rose quartz gua sha, which is like a massage facial stone um, that kind of stimulates circulation, depuffs your skin. It's, it's really good. And then a lot of our products contain little rose quartz, like the eye... Um, Oil has a rose quartz rollerball. And then in the nighttime, I always double cleanse. So I start with our milky mushroom cleanser, then I use our turmeric foaming cleanser. And then after that, I mist my face with our minty mist. Then um, I use our Noni Night Serum. So in the morning, I use the vitamin C. In the night, I use the night serum. And then I use this new serum. And then I use. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is like the, the cream medium to higher maintenance. <laughs> it, it is a simple scale. routine, but let me tell you something. But it's also probably your, your it's just like you quick, time. Quick, quick. It's, it's like, it, I think that I try to make it quick and easy with those steps. Like it sounds like a lot. And then I keep the sleeping mask next to my bed and I put that on as the last step, mm -hmm. which is the one that contains um, the silvery mushroom. So which plumps the skin. Mm -hmm. I did put that on my husband one time too. It's not, he's not as addicted to it as the turmeric scrub though. <laughs> I don't think he likes like having something on his skin while he sleeps, like the, you know, the mask. <laughs> um, so I want to go back to something that you said before, and that is that there is a lot of confusion around this idea of clean beauty, of natural beauty. What's the difference between clean and green? And you've kind of almost skirted around a lot of that by saying, I'm just, I'm going to be certified organic. Yes. What does that mean? Why was it so important to you? Yeah, so clean is a step in the right direction. I think it's a baby step in the right direction because clean is really unregulated. And so I don't really like to be put in the clean category because I feel like certified organic skincare is so much more than clean because when you have a certified organic ingredient, not only do you avoid the use of pesticides on the actual ingredient, then you avoid unnecessary you know, potentially harmful ingredients in the actual product. In addition to that, studies have shown that a certified organic ingredient contains up to 60% more antioxidants. And that is why I think our products are getting such incredible results. Because you have that potent source of antioxidants. And I really feel that healthy skin is the most beautiful skin. And we're seeing it's regulated in a way that oh, clean yeah, so isn't. Certified organic is regulated. So we're certified organic by EcoCert Cosmos. 
and they're the world's strictest um, certification body in um, the natural beauty space. And um, I chose sort of like eco eco cert cosmos because I didn't want people to take my word for it. There's a, they are a third party that look over every single thing we do from our manufacturing to our ingredient sourcing to um, our packaging. All of the components have to be approved by them. All of the verbiage on our packaging has to be approved by them. It's a really long, strict process to be certified organic, and that's why a lot of people aren't doing it. We're still the only certified organic brand that Sephora carries. And if you're interested in clean skincare, you can't get more pure than the certified organic. I mean, today we're seeing so many clean brands. It's such a cluttered landscape. It is. Do you think, do you see consumer confusion? Yeah. Um, how <laughs> I get you... confused by it. I'm like, what? Because the actual brand deems what they they have their own set of rules as to what they deem to be clean. They might say, well, we're not going to use these nine nasty ingredients. Okay, but what are you actually using? And if you read the fine label, is that just as bad as the ingredient you took out? Um, so, well, I know, like certified organic is very different. Than and clean. do you feel like for the consumer, like that that is pretty clear for them, or is education still a big part of the mission with the brand? And if so, what's been most effective for you in communicating the difference? to consumers. It's honestly probably the biggest challenge I've had with my brand is educating people about the difference. But once they actually understand the difference between um, that and like clean products and certified organic, they're like, oh, I understand. And then once they actually try our products, we see they come back for more. And that is what a lot of our, um, a lot of Cora has been built off word of mouth. Like we haven't had the money because we're like a baby brand to spend on marketing and advertising. It all is word of mouth. And obviously my word of mouth helps too. <laughs> I can help create, like educate, but there is so much more educate, like education to do. And that's something that I'm continually trying to focus on because if you can get the, the results that you need and you want in your skin in a healthy way, then why wouldn't you? To me, it's like a no brainer. And you can feel good about it because you know it's healthy for you, it's good for you, and it's good for the planet. Speaking of good for the planet, we are climate neutral certified brand. Um, so clearly you are very involved in the business. <laughs> you own 95% of it. What do you love about running a company? Um, I feel really passionate, as you can tell, about health and wellness and about giving people what I think they deserve. I think they don't, people shouldn't have to compromise their health. They shouldn't have to compromise results. And so I've really wanted to create products that give them the results they need in a healthy way. Um, so that excites me and motivates me every day. I personally still haven't taken a company out of the scent. Um, I haven't taken a cent out of the company because I want to put it out there and continue to, to innovate, like really cutting ed edge products and, you know, obviously pay my team. I don't, you know, when you have a baby, you want to continue to feed it. And that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, what do you know now that you're glad you didn't know when you were first starting out? Oh, that it takes a lot of time. Okay. To, and a lot of patience to, to watch a brand to to grow, to grow a, brand. a brand. It doesn't happen overnight. It really, it really is a time-consuming um, job, and you can never really switch off. At the end of the day, even if it's the weekend, you still have a company that is, you know, a worldwide company that you are thinking about. And I see that with my husband, who has his own company, and so. When you do, you know, when you do have that company, it's like having another child. I mean, as I said, I've got three boys, but Core Organics is my baby girl. <laughs> um, what are, what is the biggest challenge and the biggest impediment to growth? Is it distribution? Is it product development as quickly as you would like to go? Oh, when you're certified organic, it takes about two years with product development. Like, it takes a long time, so much longer 
than if you're not certified organic because we have to go through so many rules and regulations, but it's worth it in the long run. And we do so much testing to really prove the efficacy of the product. So that definitely is a challenge. The challenge also in continuing to educate people about the benefits of organics. And then also the challenge of having to meet all of the strict certifications of being certified organic. Um, finding the right distribution partners internationally, figuring out how that works on the balance sheet um, with your cost of goods and the P&L and making sure that is it even going to be profitable if you make it, you know, in London, for instance, because when you take into consideration the costs of the distributors and everyone else there running it, and then you have to look at your bottom line, that's something to really think about. Or if you open up you know, there, or whether or not you want to do a store. I mean, there are so many things to think about. And how big is the team? Um, we have 60 people right now what? on the team. How do you describe yourself as a leader? And has your leadership style evolved as the company has grown? I'd like to say, I'd, I'd like to hope that I'm growing and evolving every day um, as an individual and hopefully as a leader. Um, as I would say, there's no I in team. So it's, I really feel excited about having an incredible team that I work with. But I would say they would describe me as compassionate and kind um, and really empathetic. Um, we have a lot of mothers on the team and we really support making sure, because it is one of my values, families, you know, making sure that they're there for their family when there's a special event at school or maybe their child might not be feeling well, we're really, and we also allow people to work from home still, um, where they have that option to work from home. And we also give people um, their birthdays off, which I think is a nice thing because in my career, 90% of the time I'm working on my birthday. So it's nice to be able to be a business owner and actually give the birthday as, as it, like, uh, you know, as a day off. Um, how has your modeling career informed the development of Cora? In so many different ways, you know, um, I started mod modeling when I was 13 and that was 27 years ago. <laughs> so, um, it's been, uh, something that I've learned a lot from working with some of the most creative people in the world and also working with some of the biggest companies in the world, talking to them about how they run their companies, how do they connect with their customer, what are um, some of the ways that they engage or what have they learned. Like I, everyone, especially in the later years uh, with my modeling, when I actually I started my own business, I became even more interested on, from learning from those people um, that I was working with, the CEOs and, and the marketing managers and, and whatnot. And I just, I just feel like I learned a lot in that regard from a business perspective, but I also learned um, a lot about skincare because I literally had probably every skincare product tried on my skin from different makeup artists around the world saying, this will make your skin glow, this will make your skin glow, do this, put this treatment on, use this mask, use this scrub. So I've tried and tested so many products out there that now when I work with our chemists who I feel so blessed to work with who are like the best, I believe, chemists in the business, um, when we work on formulations together and they send them to me, I can give a lot of valuable feedback because I've tried and tested pretty much everything out there. What is your holy grail product? What, what are you in the midst of developing? Um, well, well, to be honest, I'm very excited about this new um, plant stem cell retinol alternative product because I think it's quite groundbreaking. It's the first certified organic um, stem cell, you know, retinol alternative product that's available in the world. Um, and so I love being able to provide people with these incredible results for their skin. You can use it morning and night. Traditional retinols, they really dry out your skin. This one doesn't. Um, and it gives you the results you need in a really healthy way. You don't need to be worried about, some people are worried about using retinols on their skin um, and they worry about the other detrimental health benefits. This one, you don't need to worry about that. It's super powerful, it's healthy for you, you get results. But I do also 
have an obsession with the turmeric scrub because it doesn't matter if you don't care about organic products or natural products or clean products. There is no other product out there like our turmeric scrub. It is a microdermabrasion exfoliation um, scrub and then it is also a mask that you can leave on to deeply detoxify your pores and it is like an instant facial inner tube. You notice immediate results. And so, and it's good for men and women. And that's the one my husband's addicted to as well. <laughs> so we use it, both my husband and I, predominantly as a scrub. Sloths away the dark skin, um, sloths away the dry skin cells, re-energizes your skin, brightens your skin. And it's, it's like I said, you just see instant results. And I love that. Um, so I love that you have your skincare routine as kind of as a moment of yes, me. Yes. But you lead such a busy life. You have a bazillion jobs. Yes. How how do you balance everything? And how do you think about you know finding the balance between your family and work and your husband? Yeah, it's definitely a very busy life. And it's um, something I really try to prioritize balance. When I was a little girl, my mom, um, she didn't have the privilege to work from home. Right now with my company, I do get to work from home a lot and be there with my kids. But at the same time, I, you know, make sure that I have quality time with them in the morning and so we have our little morning ritual and in the afternoon um, without phones so that I'm really focused. Even your 12-year-old, no phone? Yes. He doesn't actually have a phone at the moment. Oh, you are my hero. Yeah. Well, surprisingly, my husband, Evan, is more strict about that than what I am. So, but, so anyway... I wake up at five every morning. Um, my team on the East Coast are like, well, Miranda, you're up so early. I'm like, eh. when the, I'm always <laughs> up. They're like, what time do you go to sleep? Uh, last night I went to bed around 10, but in my ideal world, I'd go to bed around 9, 9.30. And, um, but we had an event last night anyway. And then, um, what was I saying? So for me, waking up at five, my husband, he just like goes straight into like work mode. For me, I take that time before the kids wake up to give back to myself. So that's when I do my 20 minute meditation. I do my workout literally from my computer um, with the door open. So when the kids wake up, they just come running in. And um, when I'm, if I'm lucky, they'll sleep till 6.30. So I have enough time to do my workout do my meditation and have a quick shower with my skincare routine. <laughs> but then I'm ready to go by the time they run in. I'm like, mommy. And then we go downstairs and it's breakfast time. And they love it when I make, you know, I make them pancakes, which they think they're having pancakes every morning, but actually it's just oatmeal with, um, so it's oats with um, almond milk and uh, a little bit of maple syrup and banana and you blend it and it turns into this beautiful little pancake and then you put maple syrup on top and then berries and so it's almost like they're having oatmeal every day which is healthy for them but they think they're having pancakes so okay I see a cookbook on your horizon I love to cook it's it's something I really enjoy um but yeah and then my other little one is like mommy eggies he always wants eggies I'm like eggies are for the weekend okay <laughs> <laughs> one breakfast a day <laughs> like, wait, let's stick to the the berries and the pancakes and they actually really love Vegemite on toast as well so they're little Australians if for anyone who doesn't know Vegemite is <laughs> an Australian tradition that now my children are incorporating into their life all their friends at school must be like what is that smell <laughs> Vegemite it's quite pungent anyway um, I want to um, switch gears a little bit and talk about beauty overall. Um, modeling is a business that is very focused on the exterior, but more recently we've really started to see a more inclusive version of beauty emerge. And I just was wondering, how do you see beauty evolving and where would you like to see it go? I think it's really incredible that um, it's so much more inclusive now because back when I was modeling, 
it was, it felt to me a lot more two dimensional. It was, you were a model, you're on a magazine, and that was about it. Now, with the evolution of technology, you know, advances, there obviously is social media where a lot of companies now are employing people not just based on what they look like, but based on the whole person and their personality. And I think that's really great because you get to see a part of their lives, you get to know a part of their spirit, you get to know what they're passionate about. And I really think that's something that's really important. For us at Cora, it's we have been including real life people for quite a long time with their real life results. Um, one, because I couldn't afford models <laughs> <laughs> because I was putting all the mo money back into the business. So I was like, okay, I think it's good to just actually get real life people. And so I would speak to people that I knew or customers that would say like, oh, these the results I'm getting. And I was like, okay, do you want to be in a shoot? And they would love it. And so it's been great to be able to include that um, you know, in our, you know, because it's really showing like another dimension of that person and, and including a lot more inclusivity, which is what I'm really excited about. And I think it's only heading more that, in that direction. Do you still like shooting? Mo shooting? Modeling? Oh, so you know what's interesting? I actually like to take photographs and I have shot a lot of the Cora campaigns um, with a lot of those real life people that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and I really enjoy doing that. I really love being creative. Um, but what was the question again? Um, if you still like modeling. Oh, do well, I like modeling? <laughs> well, it's interesting because I just realized the other day when I was thinking about how long I've been doing this and coming up to my 40th birthday, I was like, I can't believe I've been modeling since I was 27. Oh, no, I mean, 27 years since I was since 13. Since we're 13. Yeah, that's the lack of sleep talking. Yeah. I can't believe I've been modeling since I was 13. But when I say modeling since I was 13, that was like my first ever photo shoot. But I never really got into modeling until uh, after I graduated school, which I was young for my age, so I was 17 going on 18. Um, Anyway, I guess I could do it with my eyes closed in a way because it's become like such a second nature thing. And what's interesting is I never ever thought that it would last that long. Mm -hmm. Like even from my first job, I was like, okay, I'm gonna you know, embrace that, that's great, save my money. And that's how I've been able to invest in my company because I saved my money and I never took it for granted. And I always thought, well, tomorrow might be my next job. So I was always like, okay, save. This is a short-lived job. It's not going to last forever. Save. So then you can invest in something you are really passionate about. And thank goodness I did do that. And thanks to my mum, who's an accountant, who taught me to save and really hammered that into um, me. It really paid off. So before we turn to questions from the audience, um, you are turning 40. That's yes. such a wonderful milestone. Happy birthday. Thanks. Um, so what's next? How are you thinking about your future? Well, I just want to continue to really give people incredible products that are healthy for them, healthy for the environment, give them the results that they need. And, you know, that really excites me. And I really hope that one day we can become a household name that people really turn to and they trust and they know that they're gonna get the results they need and they're gonna feel good in their skin. And one thing we didn't talk about, Cora, I know I just continued to talk, but as you know, I'm passionate about it, is that Cora, you know, there are some other things that I added to Cora that's not just about the efficacy and, and that it being organic, but we do filter our products through crystals, rose quartz crystals and some other crystals to give that vibration of love so that when you're using the products, you feel that energy. In addition to that, um, we don't use any artificial fragrance. We use aromatherapy. So you're getting the you know, invigorating experience and um, the wonderful experience for your skin and your senses. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I've done is I put positive words on the back because to add that, you know, uplifting aspect. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's fun to me to create these products that hopefully can help people feel good about themselves and 
feel like they've taken a moment to themselves and they can have that little ritual in their life. That's such a nice purpose. To yeah. Um, we have a lot of questions for the audience. So I'm going to ask the first one. What is your perspective on the social stigma about women and aging and how has that impacted the decisions that you've made for the brand? Well, I feel like when I look at aging, as I said, I really want to be a grandma with great skin. And when I look at my grandma who, she really lit up the room every time she walked into the room and it was about the way that she carried herself. It was that holistic perspective of her. She really was a bright shining light. And that's to me the most important thing. Of course, it's great to be able to use products that can help you and have your skin be the healthiest it can be and be results driven. And that's what we're trying to do. We're pushing the boundaries with certified organic skincare. And as you can see, the results on the screen really help with that. Um, but I do think it's important to embrace it as a part of life and something that's inevitable for all of us. We can't fight it. We can embrace it and we can do it in a way that um, can really help us feel confident in our own skin. And at the end of the day, really true beauty is what's on the inside. And that's what really my grandma taught me. Mm -hmm. Um, I love this next question. How do you ensure that purpose defines your company to the both outside and internally? How do I ensure that purpose defines your company? So basically, it's important that we as a team are all aligned with, you know, our vision and our mission to help people in a healthy way and give them results-driven products um, that are good for them and good for the environment. And you know, we um, are continually talking about that with our team and when we get together, you know, we do things even in our, when we have meetings, we'll have the little crystals there, you know, we'll say what we're grateful for and we incorporate that holistic lifestyle into our meetings, mm -hmm. which I find um, important. Um, the next question is, how did you navigate switching other people's perspectives. I'm not sure I understand. Well, you were successful in modeling. What gave you the confidence to know that you would be successful in business as well? Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I just wanted to create something that I personally wanted for myself, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be a success internationally or not, or if people would like or enjoy the products, um, but I've done it for the love of it and out of the passion. As I said, I've never taken a cent out of the company. I'm not doing this to build up the company and then sell it. Like there are a lot of other brands out there that are just wanting, you know, they're like, I want to build the company and then sell it. Like for me, I actually hope that I can hand my company down to my three boys mm -hmm. and they can continue the legacy to maintain the integrity, which is why Actually, you know, I've maintained 95% share of my company. Um, the next question is, how did you approach hiring your initial team? And what have you learned from growing your team over the years? Well, um, basically what I learned is, especially I had an interview once with an accountant and she was saying to me how much she doesn't like numbers. And I was like... <laughs> Um, are you sure you're applying for the right position? <laughs> because I really feel deeply that it's important for people to be passionate about what they're doing. So I want people to play to their strengths and really be excited about coming to work every day. And I know, for instance, my managing director, um, our international managing director, he loves a spreadsheet. He loves P&Ls. He loves numbers. That is his passion. He doesn't like the creative side of it. He doesn't like the product development side of it, but he's in his passion with numbers and spreadsheets. And I'm like, great, enjoy that. So I think it's important <laughs> to put people where they're passionate about and, and, and find, um, let them understand that there is so much more room to grow and evolve if we can work together as a team. We're all wor working together in the same, you know, direction. Do you have a question that you love to ask when you're hiring people? 
Well, I'd like to ask them what they're passionate about. I like to ask them what their hobbies are. It's some interesting, you get some interesting um, answers. <laughs> um, I like to ask them what their like vision is because I personally really want to have people on my team that want to be in this for the long run um, because I invest a lot of time in my team and, I, and it feels to me like a family. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be able to have people on the team that have that same uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, but if it's just a short-lived job or a means to an end, then I, it doesn't feel like the right fit for me. And one thing that I also learned is when someone can look good on paper, they aren't necessarily good, you know, in person. And one mistake I made in the past is employing someone because um, they looked good on paper where I knew intuitively it wasn't the right fit, but I was like, well, maybe I'm missing something and I gave that person a try, and it really was a bad decision. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you have one person on the team that isn't in the same, um, with this, aligned with the same values and mission, then it can really set everyone else out of balance. Um, as you think about the growth of Cora, what role has your intuition played versus analysis? So I basically have learned to lean into my intuition quite strongly. Um, even when we were developing the turmeric mask, which I was saying is one of my favorite products, there were so many people that were saying, this is this is product, no one's gonna understand it. I don't really, you know what I mean? It's too strong, it's like, and I was like, no, people want strong products. Like, it's important for it to, and I was really glad that I went with my intuition because it's literally one of our best sellers, that and the Noni Glow face oil. People are obsessed with all over the world. Um, I think this, in, this next question is kind of an interesting build off of that. How should a beauty company evolve ingredient wise? Should it, do you believe in following the trends or sticking with what you do best? Like in beauty, we know that, you know, there's a lot of different fire. trends. Yeah. Yeah, I really follow the beat of my own drum. I mean, I don't know anyone else who's using Noni in their, <laughs> in their products. And let me tell you, Noni, if anyone has tried it, it is quite a pungent fruit and it has quite a specific scent profile. Um, so we freeze dry our Noni and that's how we incorporate and, um, and we preserve the effectiveness, but we don't have that pungent smell. Of some of our first samples did. <laughs> um, this question we did not ask. Why did you call Cora Cora? What does the name mean? Well, when I was coming up with the name, I thought really about that holistic vision of like core self, like your, your mind, your body, your skin. Um, how do you take care of your mind, your body, and your skin? And that to me was like core with a C. Then I did core with a K and then E, and that didn't feel right. And then I just came up with Cora with an A. And then I researched it, and I found it was a type of meditation. And I was like, well, I guess that feels in alignment. Mm -hmm. And it was available, so I was like, great. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> um, okay, the next We know that your husband loves the turmeric scrub. Yes. What takeaways have you been able to glean from him on running your business? Oh my God, I'm so lucky. He is a mastermind. He literally is the most intelligent man I know. So I go to him quite often. I'm like, what do you think about this? How do you think I should approach this? Um, he's very analytical and that is why I feel like we balance each other because he's very like intellectual and and I feel like I'm much more heart-centered so you know he um well he I guess he combines both but I'm much more of like the intuition heart-centered and he's more factual you know he likes the facts and um he actually taught me that it's really important to um reach out to people and say hey can you help me with this because I don't know why, maybe it's because I'm Australian or maybe it was because of the way I was raised, but I always felt like I was inconveniencing people if I was asking them for advice or help. And he taught me that you should never be afraid to ask for advice or help. And he also encouraged me to take that big stepping stone and that leap of faith to take my business internationally because he said, look, 
it's great that you have your company in Australia, but why don't you have it here? It's an incredible product. Um, and I was like, well, that's going to cost me more money and me more time. And he was like, well, if you don't do it, like, you know, like who else will? And this is an incredible product and you need to believe in yourself. And so I took that leap of faith because of his confidence in me. It's big, bold thinking. Yeah. And he, I mean, he takes lots of leaps of faith and he's done pretty well for himself. <laughs> Um, this next question is about the structure of the company. Did you pitch VCs for investment? And if not, why? If so, who are the 5% investors? So I have a 5% investor who's Australian who has been involved from day one, basically to hold my hand to like jump off because um, he was just like a friend of a friend and he wanted to invest in it more but I was like no just a tiny bit because I want this company to be mine I never wanted my vision to be diluted I never wanted someone to come in and say look let's look at this and cut costs here and make a bigger margin here and dilute the product dilute the efficacy no I don't want to compromise on the efficacy I don't want to um dilute anything I just want to be able to give people these products that I think they deserve and I don't want anyone to compromise that so I'm I'm still continuing to try and do it on my own for as long as I can um the next question has to do with your upcoming cookbook which I will be oh. your agent for thank you um, if you had to create the perfect meal for your family or friends what dishes would be featured you know I actually cooked for my husband on our wedding day um, and I made turmeric chicken, believe it or not. <laughs> um, and the way I make my turmeric chicken is you get a whole chicken, you put it in one of those crock pots and you put it face down so the breast is down and you put lots of fresh turmeric, powdered turmeric, coconut oil, lots of fresh lemon, rosemary sprigs lots of garlics like and I mean like I crush garlic I put like garlic inside the chicken um and then I use this ingredient oh and I use um Bragg's aminos and some this other um salt called herbamare which is like a different like bunch of herbs and so then you slow roast that for like you can do it, and like, depends on what the temperature you do, but if you slow roast it for, like, at least six hours, it comes out really, really tender and really juicy. And then I do, like, mashed sweet potato with that, and then I do the Miranda Chop Chop salad, which is, like, all the greens and vegetables and things you can think of because that way you can, like, disguise it in the salad, like, chop chop very spinely. Um, and so it has, you know, spinach and celery and different sprouts and radishes and carrots and then I do some grilled halloumi cheese in there um, and then I do a dressing with like, see where I'm going on again. Uh, this question is making <laughs> me so hungry now. And then the dressing has olive oil and, and brags and, and fresh lemon and the sea salt and, uh, and I make a really mean, delicious Oreo cheesecake that my husband Yum. loves. Yum. Okay, that's That's the 20, 80-20. 80% healthy, 20% indulgent. I give, my husband is like the opposite. He loves food that's not good for him. Well, Miranda, you've been amazing. I have one final question for you before we leave. Okay. And that is, how are you going to celebrate your birthday? Ooh, well, the celebrations start tonight. We're having a little launch of the new plant stem cell um, serum. So that will be fun. And then on my actual birthday, I'm having a bunch of my friends come over. Well, actually, so that's the first celebration. I hope you're not cooking. Um, I don't think so. Not this time. Um, and then, so then I've got a second party in Australia with some friends. And then I have an actual party on my actual birthday with different friends flying in from all over the world and we're going to dance. Amazing. Well, you have so much to celebrate and thank, thank you for being here today and sharing your story. Thank you. I appreciate it.